of the agenda uh, okay. as we have our alpha for uh, Ambient coming out now. It looks like May 31st is our new uh, estimated launch date. We have a few things to resolve in terms of upgrades and um, migrations. Obviously, we're hoping that users do not migrate their production workloads uh, to our alpha release just yet, but uh, we do expect to graduate this relatively quickly if we're capable and if we get positive user feedback. Uh, and I did hear from some users at KubeCon that regardless of the alpha designation, they intend to put this in production as soon as possible. Uh, the justification that they gave was basically they're spending so much on sidecar CPU allocation right now that uh, even if it's risky, they've, they've got to find an alternative uh, to, to bring their bill down. So the, the two topics that I have listed uh, are about the order of upgrade and the order of migration. I think the upgrade one may be a little bit easier. As you all know, we've spent a lot of time talking about how waypoints will upgrade in the tag and revision APIs. Uh, what we have spent less time talking about is what causes the Z tunnel to upgrade. And does that happen, should that happen before the waypoint, after the waypoint, or either or? Do we have a strong opinion there? Which I guess there's an interesting question about which which of the two pieces is more adaptable to change in protocol or uh, behavior. Right, we we more directly control the Z tunnel code and can put things in there to adapt to different versions of Envoy. But on the other hand, knowing what it's still a complicated state management process if there's a compatibility problem. Yeah. I would I would have thought the Z tunnels first, but John. Yeah, I I agree. I think we have more flexibility with Z tunnel. So in Envoy, for reference, I think you probably know this, but for others, um, you have to upgrade the control plane first, and you have to you can't then downgrade the control plane either. You have to downgrade the data plane. So we only support an older version of the proxy because it's not in our control, so we can't predict the future. The Z tunnel is in our control, so we can just make sure that we don't break forward compatibility if we choose to do that. So we have a bit more flexibility. Uh, we may not want to exercise that for, you know, maintainability, but we I think we have we could reasonably say that. Um, I I generally agree Z tunnel probably makes sense to upgrade first, um, but I think we probably also need to plan out not just what is the recommended path, but what are the supported paths for. People doing things like skip upgrades, uh, downgrades, rollbacks, that type of thing. A tape. Well, I mean, we have a lot of dependencies, right? We have the control plane, Z tunnel, CNI, waypoints, sidecars, ingress. The last three are probably all the same, given that they're all Envoy, um, but they're still different. Like a table of a matrix of support uh, would probably go a long way in in understanding this. But in general, I think we could probably strive for at least plus or minus one version on Z tunnel and, and East OD. It's probably reasonable. And go ahead, Boston. I mean, given that one goal or hope is that uh, the Z tunnel will be embedded into you know native networking and whatever, I don't think we should assume that we control anything. Um, so probably the best approach is to define the protocol that we support, meaning have a clear documentation with testing for you know, this is uh, age one, you know, HTTP to connect, blah, blah, whatever headers. And it should be, you know, we should strive to maintain co protocol compatibility for as long as possible and define new protocols when we want to do to, to, to Revit. I mean, just say that we support. Uh, but uh, I, I want to make sure we don't repeat the mistake where we have to upgrade all Istio, all components at once and they need to have matching version from the same build, with the same options, and everything else. We need to have Z tunnel with whatever implementation compatible with proxy -less gRPC, compatible with uh, whatever version of proxies that are supported. I agree. The control plane, 
I mean, the data plane compatibility should be the, the most flexible thing, right? Which is something we maintain today, right? We haven't broken that in Envoy for, I don't know, 15 versions or so. Right, exactly. So, I mean, it's not forever, but 15 versions is <laughs> quite a long time, right? That's, um, but the control plane in CNI, like that relationship, I think can be can be locked down a bit because you can run multiple control planes too, right? Yeah, but you can keep the old, I mean, you can keep Z tunnel or whatever full CNI that support uh, H-Bone with whatever control planes they have. That's completely independent. I mean, the, the evolution of Z tunnel and whatever control plane it's using and the rest are completely separate. You don't have to use the same control plane for both. Uh, yes, I. Mitch, are we on topic of your question? I forget if we if we dropped it off course. <laughs> it sounds like you know we envision the stability of the Z tunnel to Z tunnel API to be such that we can more or less upgrade it first with a relatively low risk. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I think the recommended upgrade path would be you do a canary upgrade. You add East to D. And then you upgrade Z tunnel, and they never do cross versions, right? Um, but I don't think we have a we can support cross version though. I don't think that's an issue. Um, I, the cross version would be more between the Z tunnel and Envoy. Oh, that I think so. Yeah, sorry, but I was talking about the control plane for the data plane. We'll need to support uh, many versions across. I don't know if we like an Envoy. We never committed to anything, right? Um, maybe we should. Um, I mean, given that we're alpha, like formally saying, hey, we'll support four versions doesn't really make sense because we're not actually supporting any compatibility currently. Uh, but we could still just find what we are going to support once we go out of alpha, right? Yeah, setting up a policy would be good. Yeah. Uh, but just, just a reminder, proxyless is independent of the tunnel. Uh, there is uh, two or three proxyless variation. So we absolutely must have protocol stability and to not think in terms of Z-Tunnel upgrade, but in terms of, you know, there is a mesh protocol and all components should follow the protocol. So I'm almost hearing that we're agnostic in terms to whether the Z-Tunnel upgrades before or after waypoints. Uh, I think on to Supporting them, it's helpful for it to allow either option, so you can do wait or rollbacks and whatnot. Um, obviously, we should have an opinionated way to do it, um, and that opinion, I think, is upgrade Z tunnels first makes the most sense to me. That way, on a, on a happy path, when you're not doing a rollback, you never have to reinstall that control plane because enabling the Z tunnel is a control plane install time parameter, right? Uh, well, in general, I think we'll recommend them be separate. Like we, we've kind of moving away from the one big used to operator that installs five things to installing each one separately, right? Um, so I think we'll recommend you install them as two separate steps. Um, but yes, I mean you do install the control, do okay. version of the control plane. Do like a separate chart? Yeah, I mean you can't really use. Z tunnel and Easter D in the same chart effectively. I mean, they are literally different Helm charts. So if you're using Helm, you can't possibly combine them. Uh, but if you're using Easter Cuddle, you don't want to combine them because uh, Z tunnels are not revisioned, but Easter D is, right? So you kind of need them separate. So you can install two Easter Ds and one Z tunnel. That makes sense. And we don't have any particular leader election that controls which control plane is operating the Z tunnel? Uh, no, we do. That's a default revision, or we could have a parameter in Z tunnel to specifically pin to one, either one. Uh, we probably want, I mean, like it just has an address right out of the service. So, uh, I mean, CNI and Z tunnel can be combined and probably should discuss if we want to combine them or not or what uh, the install process because both of them require super high per permissions, uh, I mean, host level, non level permissions. Okay. One complication, if we do tie the control plane Z tunnel relationship to the default revision, uh, as soon as the default revision is updated to allow a new control plane to control the Z tunnel, that will also upgrade any waypoints that are participating in the default revision. I don't know if that's an acceptable combination of steps or, or if that's problematic. 
So it's probably independent. I mean, they can update waypoints, however they. No, that's what I'm saying. They can't. Uh, if they're using waypoints that are on the default revision, and the default revision also operates which control plane controls the Z tunnel, then those two pieces will move together simultaneously. That is true. By the way, I got working what I discussed last time about uh, having a gateway as uh, Istio D, Istio system. Oh, nice. Without so that may solve this problem as well, meaning that you can point to whatever version you want, percentage by based on headers or whatever. So, so you have full control over where the tunnel goes. Yeah, I would love to kick the tires on that and get an idea for kind of how that operates. So don't we have similar problem today with the gateway uh, where we recommend users to install ISTOD separately from uh, the ingress gateway, right? So during upgrade, you can fully control the sequence between the two? It depends on if you're doing the manual install or the automated install. For the manual install, you manually control it, of course. If you're doing the auto install, then it's the same thing that Mitch talked about with the waypoint. Once you change the default, uh, revision, then it will start upgrading any gateways pointing to the default revision, right? But you can change this. I mean, you can control how, you know. Yeah, that's only if you're, you know, if you're using the default, um, the default revision. So. Yep. Do we have signal on whether that's been problematic? Uh, we haven't shipped this, so no. Um, no, no, the. The, the use of default revision upgrading gateways and sidecars at the same time. Yeah, that part, it's, well, it's different today. So today it only, it upgrades when you restart the containers. Now we're going to restart them for you for the gateways. Yeah. Um, so that part, we don't have any signal on because that, even for gateways, that's also going out with 1.18. Mm -hmm. um, on the restarting, I haven't really seen people complain about that, but. Okay. I mean, you don't have to do it, of course, right? You can use a non-default revision if you want more control, so. I mean, I don't necessarily see bundling Z tunnel and waypoint control plane updates to a revision as being strictly problematic. And I mean, that wouldn't that wouldn't trigger an upgrade of the Z tunnel. It just changes which control plane the Z tunnel is communicating with. Correct? Which should be perfectly fine. I mean, if, if it's not fine, we have a problem. We need to make sure that sure. the yeah. protocol is well defined and stable. So, so what, what kind of future events do we predict causing problems for us during upgrade? Right, switching from H bone to Q bone? We'll support both. So we're not going to drop H1. We're going to support H1, H, Q1. Right. So Z tunnel will always support both, right, when you upgrade it. Uh, Envoy will likely only support H bone for a period of time, right? That feature is not on the immediate roadmap in Envoy. Could we end up in a downgrade problem? It's not downgrade, it's direct equivalent, no? Well, we have to be very careful putting, if we put TCP over Qboat, right, that could get us stuck. Until you knew every component was Qbone capable, you couldn't put TCP over it. Why, why not? Both ends so negotiate, they know what they support. No, no, but Envoy doesn't support Qbone, right? So if you put TCP over Qbone, you couldn't send it through a waypoint. So any of those kind of variances in protocol support between Z-Tunnel and Envoy, we have to be very careful about. Not, ju yeah. not just like the, the like the, the baggage, but also the, the tunnel itself. Isn't this part of the handshake? I mean, uh, if it doesn't support Cubone, Fall back to H one or detector. It's a HTTP over uh, HTTP three basically. You want HTTP three. Quick. Uh, 
Uh, Q, Qbone is Hbone done with Quick instead of HTTP2. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, I don't necessarily think it's a problem. We just have to be careful, right, to not trap ourselves in an upgrade for TCP tra traffic. Yeah. Are there are there other types of changes we might expect? Right, there's some discussion about less baggage and more metadata lookup out of band, but that shouldn't break anything as long as the metadata lookup supersedes baggage in theory. Right. If you're always sending baggage, as long as the server receiving the baggage can get it, the information at once from the baggage or from metadata lookup, it's not a problem. It's only a problem if the client stops sending it and the server is not able to look up in metadata. Really? And we're not even sure that we're doing changing that yet, right? Now that you brought this issue, uh, do we have any position on, on switching from baggage to metadata lookup? For we don't yet have a, a position, so I guess our current position is the default, which is we send baggage. But do you want to, I mean, I, I know for, for this alpha or whatever we use baggage, but do you want to continue or do you want to switch to to, to lookup, which is compatible with non-Istio clients and so forth? I think we need, so one, we need stability and scale numbers for baggage, right, Custom? Right, so we can't make the switch without knowing. We can always send baggage. We have it. The server can choose whether to use metadata or baggage. But if we have it working with metadata, then maybe you know it's wasteful to send baggage. I don't know. We we probably need to do some testing to see what is the cost of baggage. Proxy as gRPC people were very very opposed to to pro to, to this, but. They're also post metadata, so that doesn't change too much. But um, maybe we should not have two ways to do it, do things long term. I mean, we should pick one now that we have a chance to do. So I, I, I'm going to interrupt this just a bit in, in terms of I, I know that there's a lot of compatibility issues uh, that we have to talk about over the coming year. In terms of upgrades, uh, Traditionally, the default revision is something we tell users to move last. That's considered the stable revision, right? If you didn't select anything else when opting into Istio, you get the default revision. So the structure that we've advised users to take in the past is maybe you have an alpha tag and a beta tag, and you upgrade each of those tags first. You watch how they're going. They're the early adopters, the things that can break. Uh, and then after a while, once the beta tag has shown to not have any problems with the upgrade, you go ahead and move the default revision as a last step. That would mean that our Z tunnel moving to the new control plane would also be part of the last step of the upgrade process. Is that acceptable? And, and that's completely divorced from when to upgrade the Z tunnel, I think. Or the, is that correct? Good question. So we're not tied to Z-Tunnel connecting to the default revision, by the way. We, we can make it point to an explicit revision. Um, right, the, the issue there is, is this blast, blast radius control, right? Yes. Yeah. The, the ideal is a canary right for each revision selected by workload. Right, so if you you have a pod with an alpha tag, it talks to the alpha Z tunnel. If you have a pod with the default tag, it talks to the default Z tunnel, and both are running. Hmm. Yeah, but if we don't support canary of Z tunnel, I'd rather just do in place and move to the latest for simplicity. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, the, the, do, doing like multi tag canaries of Z tunnels is probably maybe more trouble. It's a lot of work. Yeah, maybe down the road, like initial pass, I just don't see us support that. 
Because we need to think out a one upgrade path for as as we move to beta, right? To, to, to be clear, I mean, it's we still have multi-cluster, so normal processes, you update the Canary cluster where you're testing your workloads, you verify it works, it's not a problem. So it's not like it was before with Envoy where it was very tightly coupled and so, I mean, Z-Tunnel, it's supposed to have a stable protocol and should be safe to, to in-place upgrade, like, like CNI, we are not doing Canary for CNI. Right, exactly. CLI and Zitanal actually have stronger dependencies than, than Zitanal and this DOD. So that's that's one uh, the one I'm more worried about upgrading at the same time and keeping in lockstep. John, you mentioned that we're not tied to the Z tunnel communicating with the default revision of STOD. Is that something like that is currently configuration based? You could say label your Z tunnel and it connects to a different SDOD, or is that just currently hard coded, but we'd be open to changing that? Uh, no, I think it's reading the same uh, proxy config that we read for Envoys, which has a discovery address. So you can, I, I assume we we probably only said eStudio system today, um, but you could easily. Okay. I think you could probably set it in the help chart if you knew what you were doing today. Okay. I get so I, I think the outcome here that I'm hearing is for my initial pass of our CICD reference architecture, I'll follow the steps that I've listed in the notes here. Uh, install the new control plane, migrate your tags one by one to the new revision, migrate the default revision to the new control plane, then install the new Z tunnel and turn down the old control plane. That that can act as a, a first pass. Uh, we'll get some feedback from users and, and see if there's anything that's not really lining up well for them there. Does that work for everybody? Uh, Major, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure i mean my concern is that we don't have a very safe way to upgrade the tunnel uh, to prevent breaking connections and all the solution i heard are pretty weird i think the only safe way to upgrade cni and the tunnel is through cordoning at this point if anyone believes that it's you can do it safely without cordoning the nodes and doing the same thing you do when you upgrade the kernel and, and the rest of the node so i would, I would treat cni node kernel underlying cni you know the and the tunnel as one step completely decoupled from east to upgrade you can stick with with the same z tunnel for you know one then it is really cycle without without having to to upgrade it i can definitely see how that could be advantageous i think for our alpha release we don't really have a strong idea of how that cordoning process looks. Um, there's also, I've heard a few other ideas, like, like the ability to canary uh, a Z tunnel. All of those are interesting. The, this reference architecture is very much scoped to the alpha release, designed to get feedback from users, to give them sort of a template to follow as they try out. But I'm very much open to exploring ways. You know, we've invested most of our time, most of our discussions have been on the waypoint because we believe that's the riskier upgrade of the two. Uh, over the coming three months, we should invest more time on the Z-Tunnel side uh, to understand what the impact is to traffic, to evaluate coordinating options, canarying options. Before we go to beta, I would like to have a better idea of the impact of upgrading a, a, a Z-Tunnel on users and any mitigation steps that they can take. But, but the best is to decouple it, that's what I'm saying. I mean, to treat Z-Tunnel and CNI as, as one, one thing that is completely independent of the release cycle of Istio. You can oh, upgrade. Yeah, so like their own release cycle, okay. Its own release cycle can be slow release cycle, can be, you know, because it will be a different release cycle if, you know, different CNI providers start embedding Z-Tunnel or it's moved into the data plane deep inside, it will be clearly a completely different release cycle. Right. which stresses all the more the importance of compatibility between those two layers, because the version skew between them could be substantial. Right, so I guess to exercise that property without actually separating them yet, we could recommend that the upgrade process is upgrade the Z-Tunnel first. Okay. Or last. Or let the provider vendor to upgrade. Oh, so the, the previous one Mitch talked about was last. Yeah. Right? Upgrading it first exercises forward compatibility. Before right, control proper, plane? 
before the control yeah. plane. It's a it's a it's a more stressful upgrade actually, in some respects, right? It's it creates a greater compatibility burden because it exercises forward compatibility. This is alpha. I'm comfortable making some risky decisions on this on this one in particular. I think it's a good time to do that. It's more about if we have control or not. I mean, that's that's my concern. We what's the ideal situation if Citonal is successful is that we'll not have any control because the platform vendor will include somehow Zitonal functionality into the data plane. So first, last, it's out of your control. It's whoever, you know, vendor is upgrading the, the CNI and the data plane, they will include whatever version of Zitonal they tested with, which maybe not even Zitonal, maybe something else. Right, but then, then we just have a control plane skew requirement, right? Which is fine if we have stable protocols. So Z -total, Z totals can still consume a revision control plane, right? You could have two control planes, one for waypoints and one for Z totals. Yeah, absolutely. Our Z tunnel can do that. Other Z tunnels may use their own control plane or do some other stuff, who knows? But by design, is there decoupled? I mean, Z tunnel can. You know, an implementation can just run it directly and not use the control plane at all if they choose to. I think I am in favor of separating the life cycle of the other Istio components from the life cycle of the Z tunnel. I, I would say, however, we need a detailed proposal on that and probably full TOC review. Like that should not be something we go or, or proceed with uh, without a lot of careful consideration. Yeah, I think for the moment we probably have to keep them coupled because we we would have to introduce a whole new revision scheme, right? Like the Z tunnel revision and the waypoint revisions, right? And also this has to coexist with regular old sidecars, right? Which would lovingly have a third revision. So for the moment, it's probably best to just have one and hope it doesn't fall over. Well, we don't have everything to have a separate revision. We can have you know, Z zero one and, and, and everything else with their own uh, revision. For the time being, Louis, sidecars and waypoints share a revision system. I, I know. Uh, and, and I don't, th actually, that that's sort of intentionally designed that way. Uh, right, but like sidecars are the combination of a waypoint and a Z tunnel, logically. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. That's what, that's why one is strictly easier for the moment. And if if one is always viable, right, then we can deal with customs requirement when it comes in. Okay. I think I'm comfortable with what we've got on upgrade order, unless anybody else wanted to add to that. So what is our order again? Because I guess I I think an upgrade Z tunnel before control plane is honestly uh, very confusing because so I'm trying to understand what advantage does it provide. The the main reason is for the longest time we've been educated user you have to update your control plane first, then your data plane. So we always kind of. Uh, tell user that so if you think about zetunnel as part of your data plane you would think it would update update after the control plane i think what we're saying is from a technological perspective the Z, Z tunnel can upgrade at any point in the process it can be step one it can be the last step it can fall somewhere in the middle we have broad compatibility um, obviously for the sake of the ci cd reference implementation and it has to fall somewhere. Right, and also we have limited time for testing too. Do we want to support all these combinations? Yeah. So I guess that th there's a fair question here, which is we obviously want it to be independent in the long run, but in the medium to short term, what is going to yield the most ex stable experience per user? Right, that's the least disruptive yeah. so we get feedback. So is it control plane first or data plane first, right? If you've been telling users to do control plane first forever, and control plane first allows us to patch for any uh, XDS configuration API issues that we have, may have committed in the previous release, right, in, as workarounds, then that's probably more stable in aggregate. You know, now that 
now that I think about it, in, in terms of the CI-CD reference architecture, we don't have to strictly order those steps. We can make them two separate pull requests. Uh, one pull request upgrades the Z-Tunnel. Remember that this is all GitOps centric. So one PR oh, upgrades yes, the Z-Tunnel, another PR upgrades the control plane. What order the users approve those pull requests in is, is really at their discretion. Yeah, I, I guess, so the, the point here, Kasten, is while we want to be stable during downgrade when it's beta or GA, we don't have to be stable for downgrade when it's alpha. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that, but uh, we need to design for what is the end state yeah. we want to be yes. in. I mean, alpha doesn't really matter. Uh, I have an extreme yeah. solution for you. Uh, how about, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's extreme. How about when you install the tunnel, it also installs a small uh, ISTOD with everything turned off and just waypoint, uh, and which is specifically, you know, tuned for, uh, Z tunnels and nothing else, all the other feature off. And then it's absolutely completely independent because Z tunnel will have its own STOD, will do its own stuff. Uh, and we can completely decouple the recycle and upgrade and everything else since. And uh, it is if you turn off all the features and all the other things and you dedicate an STOD only for Z tunnels, you know, it will use almost zero CPUs and uh, not be affected by whatever waypoints are doing. Yeah, I think that has to be part of that bigger design, right, for the independent upgrade, right? It's, it's probably a bit much to chew that off for alpha at this point. I, I, I get what you're saying. Like, I mean, logically, they have two independent control planes. So why not just make that the case? Um, yeah, I, I just think we need a bit more time to work through that. Yeah, no, no. I mean, of course, we need to. But I think turning off all the features and and or a lot of features and having a ISTOD that is super narrow and doesn't have RBAC permission across everything, doesn't do all the other crazy stuff. It would not be a bad idea. Okay, that that's helpful input. I think that gives me what I need to build the reference architecture, uh, and I will share that with you all once it is in a good state. The second question I had, unfortunately, I think is the more complex of the two. Uh, I'll, I'll try to wrap the conversation up fairly quickly because I know we have other people with agenda items. Uh, when migrating to ambient from sidecar mode, at what point is the sidecar removed? Do we install the Z tunnel and the waypoint, then remove the sidecar? Will they work together nicely? The expectation here is that they do work together nicely. So you would install everything with Waypoint and Z-Tunnel, Waypoint optional, of course, and then remove the sidecar. Yeah, and my understanding is uh, the Istio CI that sets up the traffic redirection should check if it's sidecar exists or, sh or if the sidecar injection label exists. It should not set up the redirection so it wouldn't need to be captured by Z-Tunnel. And then as soon as the pod restarts, there is no sidecar. CNI notices that and yep. redirects through Z-Tunnel. Yeah. What so certainly Wait there could be traffic downtime, I guess, in this case, for that particular pod, if that's your only pod, right? Because you have to restart the pod. Sure. If you're using the Gamma API to control traffic flows, in a hybrid mode where you have some things using sidecars and some things not, or some things using ambient. How do we decide whether to schedule a waypoint in response to a gateway object? Not to understand your question, Mitch. If you have a gateway, there's always a waypoint. So today you can have a gateway in Istio 117, and there's definitely no waypoint, right? Oh, sorry. It's a different class for waypoints versus ingress gateways. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's still a waypoint. I think it's a gateway class. So you would have to explicitly declare that to deploy the waypoint. So part of the migration process will be our users explicitly changing the class of all of their gateways, assuming they're already using gateways or converting all their virtual services and destination rules to gateways. Um, I think users using gateways today would continue to keep them as ingress gateways, and waypoint yeah. would be replacement for sidecars. I mean, you could, in theory, replace 
Well, no, you can't really. You can't really replace an Ingress gateway with a waypoint today. Uh, sorry, I think I'm. I, I would think I was unclear there. If you are using the gate, the Gamma Gateway API to drive Sidecar Istio today, and you would like to migrate to Ambient, part of that migration will involve changing the class of all of those Gamma no, gateways. So in Gamma, there's no uh, gateways actually. One used to be route attached to service. I mean, the GA is Gateway API in Gamma, right? I mean, it is confusing that it's Gateway API for Mesh. It doesn't use the <laughs> Gateway resource within the Gateway API. It uses the HTTP route resource. But yes, that is. Uh... <laughs> so we can, we can call it Pama if you want. <laughs> okay. so, I mean, it sounds like I have more offline education to do before I can talk intelligently on this topic. So I, I don't want to hold up the whole group on that front. No, that, I, I mean, mean, that is understandably very confusing. Uh, but yeah, but... It's, it's not an issue. Um, yeah, the key point I want to make uh, to wrap this up, Mitch, is uh, the assumption is that as if you are a user, you shouldn't need to change your HTTP route or virtual service or destination rule that should continue to work. The uh, only thing you need to worry about is from that sidecar to deploy the waypoint. OK, thank you. Yeah. Well, those were my questions. I think there is more on the agenda. Next up is Iris. Oh, yeah. So uh, I actually put a design document there. So uh, let me sh try to share. Can you see it now? Yes. It's okay. Yep. So yeah. So basically, uh, this is some follow-up actions we want to take after our the eBPF redirection work has been merged. So um, for now, uh, the eBPF redirection can work well with the kind net and Catico. So, but for Catico, uh, there are some you know uh, work uh, some steps you need to take, uh, especially for the uh, uh, RPF side, you need to disable this thing, the Calico will work. So now we want to make sure uh, the ca uh, the Cilium part can work well with the EPPF part. So this is basically some summarize, su summarize here. So there are um, basically three major issues. One is the uh, uh, TC program execution order. Uh, the other one is uh, currently the Cilium will um, put a lot of information in their eBPF di directly. So it means our current net index um, way to get to get the uh, uh, the interface information from the pod IP uh, will not work. So this means By we the need way, to Aris, so you're not uh? presenting the doc. Uh, just to point that out. You're not presenting the doc, you're presenting the agenda. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. No worries. Let me let me share again. It is the correct one, right? right? Yep. Okay. So uh, let me continue. So these uh, three big issues, and we have uh, a solution for for each of them. So the first one, we can rely on some, you know, BPF um, uh, priority field, uh, order here. So uh, Cilium also has this option. So it means when you install uh, Cilium, you can put their TC uh, eBPM program. Uh, after our uh, redirection TC uh, program. The other part is uh, we need to rely on the uh, Cilium client API to get related uh, interface information. So uh, these are two pre-requirements. Um, one is you need to, we need to import, import, import the Cilium client API in our Istio source code. Uh, the other one is to grant access to this one. And the, the, the third part is you need to disable the source IP uh, verification for the tunnel pods. Uh, so this also uh, is a Cilium option here. But this option will only be available in the upcoming Cilium release. So it means uh, this solution will if we will go go in this way, um, the whole solution will only work uh, after Cilium 1.14 because this option is only available 
um, you know, in this release. So I already got some comments from Benjamin and uh, and uh, Ethan. So uh, thanks a lot for the comments. So one big thing uh, we are in question now is um, actually this part. So how we package all these things together? Uh, do we want to, you know, import all the Cilium client API in the East or South code directly? Or any suggestions here? And uh, for this, yeah, go I, ahead. I think also the, the kind of the devils in the details, it'd be great to see the implementation to understand if there's any impact on Cilium functionality. Uh, yeah, we have a, a, a prototype here, but uh, we want to, uh, you mean you want to see a demo before we finalize the proposal? Uh, I mean, demo would be great, but ideally, uh, because it's so low level, Cilium, EBPF, all this stuff, it'd be great to re review the code to kind of, because that's really the only way of understanding the full implications of how Z-Tunnel and Cilium interact? Mm, yeah, so before that, um, I, I will prefer to see the the uh, technical direction, especially for the, for, the, for, the, for the first part, for this part. Do we want to put it directly into Istio CNI or, I mean, a, maintain a separate um, model? In Istio, then, then because if we put all the dependency in the in the Istio CNI, um, we also need to detect the underlying CNI. If it is Cilium, then we enable uh, you know specific code to do the related thing. If it is not, we will follow the original code path. So, is this acceptable or not? Or you prefer you know a separate module? This is the the, the big question we want to ask. Well, I think that. As Yuval was saying, the question, the answer to that question relies on the implementation, right? Like I think, I think we need to better understand the actual eBPF implementation here before we decide on mo same module, different module, Istio CNI, non Istio CNI. I think that like, you know, we have some Cilium and eBPF expertise on our side and would just like to see what the, like the, the exact design in terms of like, just to answer the questions, for instance, that myself and Benjamin have put forth about the actual redirection and the chaining and how that works in practice, because it will inform our answers to those other questions. Yeah, so like, I- very, very specifically, Iris, I think, you know, mm -hmm. this solution requires the integration of the Cilium client, right? Yeah. If there was a solution that didn't require the integration of a Cilium client, it would probably change the answer to your first question, or might change the answer to your first question. Yeah, but but our current proposal uh, will indeed require the Cilium client API. So this is the proposal background. So I I just want to ask him feedback based on this assumption because this is our current approach. Oh, we haven't right. found other way. You know, do not rely on client API or, or something. So Aris, I think in Istio, if you look at the code, you'll find that we have code specific to GCP. We have code specific to other platforms. I don't think it's it's it was ever a, a policy that if a code is licensed Apache, you cannot use it, uh, you know, within reasonable, uh, you know, dependencies and other things. So I, I don't think anyone will say it's impossible or is not allowed to use you know, CNI specific or platform specific or vendor specific code in, in Istio uh, in, in, with reasonable boundaries. I think the bigger problem there though, is that the CNI component in Istio is already bifurcated heavily and adding the Cilium stuff would be a pretty significant architectural difference from the existing stuff again. Uh, and at that point it becomes more like, you know, we've talked about for Istio CNI specifically, if you want to support, I don't know, Azure, and you can't do it effectively without you. Maybe you just or, or Windows containers or whatever. Maybe you just write your own CNI extension for Istio, right? So I think if the changes are severe or serious or large, as they would, I think, end up being here, not just integrating the Cilium client, but also like fundamentally probably having a different flow for how redirection is configured. 
it makes sense to do that separately from the actual CNI piece itself that we've already got. I don't really want to cram more branching logic into our CNI component because it is already something of a mess. Um, yeah. But yeah. I agree it's a mess and probably needs some cleanup. Uh, there is conditional compilation. We can build, you know, Istio CNI dash uh, Cilium, Istio CNI dash whatever. We, we have options to, you know, if the, we want to keep the binary size small, we want to keep dependency small, but uh, in the end, this, this interception should probably be eventually part of the CNI itself, and we should try to get it upstream in Kubernetes as a requirement have an API that redirects stuff to a particular port and pod so that all mesh implementations can use oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Long term, I agree with that for sure. And but, short term, yeah. we can survive probably with enough extra library, I mean, if it's Cilium, since it's very, I mean, we, we, we make case by case, I think it's reasonable to make decisions. OK, so I, I guess mm -hmm. Go ahead, I, I guess there, there's, there's a certain amount of tolerance for maintaining the baroqueness of the, the current CNI, even though it's suboptimal. And we, we need to invest in dealing with that. Uh, but there's certainly a tolerance for it. John, you had something? Yeah, I think we may be going down the, the wrong path a bit. Um, like in the current implementations, we're kind of building on top of Demar CNIs that don't do much, and so just hijacking everything from them and bypassing them is perfectly fine because we replace all their functionality. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure that same pattern is what is expected for people that run things like Cilium. Um, I think that both the Cilium team is open to and it would lead to a better outcome if we actually integrate more closely with Cilium rather than just trying to inject our programs before theirs and win the race. Uh, because there's a lot of functionality that Cilium does that we don't do or intend to do, right? Like they have tons of network policy, observability stuff. Like that's something that we would be able to hook into instead of trying to kind of hack around if we, you know, we're willing to send a bit of code into Cilium itself to support ZTunnel rather than kind of trying to work around it. I think that's the devil in the details where like exactly like we mentioned in the doc where the the kind of high level implementation here is a little bit secondary to the way that the, the exact way that we're interacting with Cilium um, in terms of the chaining and like how that like because it might accomplish right I think I think the problem here is that because we haven't seen it we don't know if it even accomplishes that I agree John 100% with your takeaway but according to Iris that 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 is okay so I, I think we need to figure out if the, like, I think the important part of this proposal is does it fulfill those requirements, not necessarily the, the client library. Yeah, I, I think that there's, I mean, there's no way it can work with Cilium natively, right? Like we're changing the ports. So at the very least we're breaking network policy unless Cilium is aware of what we're doing, right? That's what I would think as well, but I, I would like, to have, I mean, I'm I'm open to the to the design if it if it does work because I, Iris mentioned that there's a working POC, so I I think it's important. That's why I'm saying I think it's important for us to see what's happening here and then make a decision about yeah, then make a decision. Can you yeah, clarify um, which option you implemented, by the way? Sorry, Lin, can you repeat? Can you clarify which option you implemented? Uh, so. Uh, so basically, for we 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 summarize the three bigger issues when we integrate uh, with the Cilium EB, because it's a, also a EBPF based proposed a solution. So the 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 big one, I mean the first one, the EBPF program order pro problem. So for this one, we we will want to utilize the Cilium option here. But this is the big thing I think. Uh, the gym or Eaton, they have concern with because they are not sure whether this can really work or not. So based on that, they want to see a, a, a demo or, or something like this. I think for our part, we can, you know, add more details for this part um, and maybe some, you know, demo or, or prototype to prove that uh, this solution can work. I think this is a major concern from 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 Eaton or Benjam, am I correct? Eaton? Because 
Yes, yes, because we want exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so th this is the first thing, Lin. The second thing is get the best information by calling Cilium Client API. So this is the concern, I, I, I think, from Luis to see whether we have other, you know, approach to integrate with Cilium. So, yeah, um, this is well, the... I, 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 So I think, like, whether or not the CNI includes the, the Cilium client library is probably a, a secondary concern. Right, so it sounds like there, there are three options, three things to evaluate. Right. Mm -hmm. One does the proposal, like the technical proposal, work regardless of how it's incorporated into CNI. Two, is there a better way of doing it? And what John suggested, maybe is trying to push Cilium to standardize a hook, right? So that there's kind of a mutual agreement between the Istio project and the Cilium project about how this should happen, right? And so there's a contract for it, right? Because if the solution works but it's brittle, right? That's problematic as well. And then there's this tertiary concern of like how do we package this into our CNI so it we can turn it on, but that's probably the least important thing to figure out. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. So for the second one, second thing to to know, you know, uh, negotiation or collaboration with the Cilium community, uh, what's the better approach here? <laughs> do we, John, I mean, do we, do we, Eastern community I, want to do contribute more or Cilium path want to contribute more? I, th I think that's something that John is looking into for Google, right? Yep. Yeah, so uh, Ata and Yuva, uh, our team is also looking at this area, so just so you know. So we're also interested in yeah, doing maybe, work in this area. Maybe we should take this, because this is kind of very specific. So maybe we should, you know, if we're interested in the devil in these details here, maybe we should schedule something specifically to chat about this. Um, because this might this might take quite a while, but yeah, I think I think it's an interesting conversation. Yeah. I, I would double what Louis was saying earlier. I mean, we need a contract that is you know for all Kubernetes CNI providers that works with all mesh implementations, not specific to Istio, not specific to Cilium. We need probably to engage with the, you know either Gamma Gateway or Kubernetes upstream. To push some changes will take years, but at least we'll, we'll set the direction for uh, for this. I think the requirements that we have to make Z tunnel work are not the same as the requirements to do sidecar redirection. So we could do it necessarily, but I don't want to imply that those are the same. Right? No, no, no. Yeah, but cover both yeah. both modes because we we also have you know sidecars. We also have. Uh, but Z tunnel is not the only one that intercepts some stuff. I mean, I, I know there is an API already in Cilium to, to redirect a port to a pod. So it's not really, it's just an extension of the API they already expose. Yeah, Costin, we evaluate that that API, actually that Cilium CID, like uh, local node redirect, something like this. Local node redirect, yeah. yeah um, but the seems it's not very user friendly, especially if we want to do things because the, if you want to utilize this, you need to configure a one pod by one pod. One, I mean, one by one is, you know, Tobaserm. No, no, no. I mean, I'm not saying, I mean, it's it's kind of, a, you know, a signal. It's, 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 it's something that shows that it's possible. Yes, they only have one port. They could have multiple ports, but it's something that could be generalized, made more user friendly and applied to both sidecars. And because any interrupt between meshes is, is not going to work if each mesh is bringing so CNI and it's hacking its own. Uh, stuff i mean right now the unfortunate state of cni is right is they're they're all radically different um and they don't all work like so there's a lack of interrupt between the cnis never mind meshes yep. um so i think you're right in assessing cost and that it would take years to get any kind of standardization done and so we're still always in the world of look there are five CNIs that matter, right, for the overwhelming majority of use cases, and we have to deal with them. Yeah. And Cilium is one. And whatever we can do to make it work, it's good for starts, and and, and then we iterate until we, we get to five years later. Yeah. yeah, we can use it as the, the basis for maybe starting to refine the standard. So, Aris, did you get something working? Do you have some, some prototype working? Yeah, we already have some prototype. My colleague Chen has a prototype. So yeah, we can definitely add some details in this talk. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, the and, and have, or put it in a branch so you know at least we have something until a better solution comes along. I mean, it's kind of yeah, but based on today's discussion, it seems we want to approach another way, like you know, uh, collaborate with Cilium directly. Seems John has some collaboration in the Google side. So, John, will you initiate the discussion? And if this is the case, we can pause our current work to see. You know how that part direction goes is this reasonable john uh yeah sorry you're just like one week ahead of where where we were um before. so we're we're planning to you know, talk with them um very soon so but i don't yeah. think that's yeah. exclusive yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. sorry uh Aris, you, you, you said oh, no, no. Go ahead. okay go ahead Dean. sorry Oh, okay. Thank you. So, Iris, I do think it is a beneficial for us to evaluate your approach to. Um, so, I think multiple people have asked if it's okay, like if it's open source um, ready or just for people as a POC um, in a branch. I, I think we would love to see it to see if this approach could potentially be better. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we will talk internally and. Uh... And, uh, and get back. Okay, cool. And I think of what part of the question we're particularly interested in since you got the POC working is how is the network policy, is network policy of Cilium can be enforced? And uh, oh, who is the network policy that? for Cilium cannot be enforced. Oh, okay. That Okay, that's our concern with the approach, I think. Yeah, yeah, that cannot work. Yeah, this okay, is for that sure. Our, that, so that, that was our core concern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, but that's probably a pretty fundamental requirement, Iris. Unfortunately, okay. right? I mean, users are going to expect that the systems compose, that they don't stomp all over each other. Um, obviously, there are like, anytime you go and do something at L seven, it's going to override something that may have happened at L four, right? So there, there are nuances in describing how the policy should work when you have a mesh versus just the CNI. Um, but Z tunnel on its own shouldn't interfere with that, right? Because Z tunnel is just pure L four, L three, L four. So I think the expectation would be that network policy would continue to work if there was no waypoint in place. Okay, yeah, this is the big gap here. We, yeah, we because we we have confirmed our prototype. The net the Cilium network policy cannot work. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, to know. So I think yeah. that I think that's gonna be a, a real that's gonna be a big problem. I don't I don't think we can actually do that virus. Okay. Isn't it the like case for the other CNI network policies? I mean with uh, Calico and the others. Mm, I think currently, you know, the tunnel actually a little something like a break the network security because uh, you know the the T proxy or or something. So for other network policy, for other CNI, it might also have a problem. Yeah, yeah and, and, I think is why it's important to have that contract. Yeah. Right. And this is this is sort of the beginning of that conversation, right? And who's responsible for what and how do we interact, et cetera. Right. Obviously with KubeNet, there is no policy, right? So that's not a problem. So I guess there's a question, does it work today with Calico? Because right, it just really depends where that happens in the network flow, right? Does yeah, we we, know with yeah we we may need uh you know uh action to you know summarize current network policy support in ambient. I think there are a, a, a big hole here. Yeah, I think one of our uh, developer tried it. Even just with Cilium, it, it won't. It's not compatible. Like Ambient would break. So I don't know if you guys tried it, but I do agree. A summary of where we are on different CNI would be super beneficial, especially as we release uh, Alpha of Ambient soon. Yeah, agree. Okay, thank you guys. Yeah, thank thanks you for everyone. starting this. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.